The relative calm of Broadstairs, compared with its brash neighbours, Margate and Ramsgate, made it the perfect destination for families. There was so much to do for a little boy like Giles, and one thing in particular caught his eye. Punch and Judy is perhaps the best known of all traditional seaside entertainment. The first recorded performance took place in London's Covent Garden in 1662. The shows were originally intended for adults, but the Victorians changed all that in the 19th century, moving it out of the taverns and halls and onto the beaches at places like Broadstairs. This is Smokey the Clown. In 1955, he had the job of running Viking Bay's very own Punch and Judy show. Mums would give Smokey a shilling, then boys and girls would sit and watch for half an hour, enraptured by the antics of Mr Punch. Hello, Uncle Smokey, I've come to say goodbye. Well, cheerio, bye-bye. See you again next year. He's someone both Giles and I remember all too well. Well, as a special treat, I know you're a big fan of Punch and Judy, and we've set up a special showing. It's a beautiful theatre, isn't it? Perfect. Let's have a little look. Ah. Hello! 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 I love Punch and Judy. There's something very, even though it's actually a European tradition, something very British about it. Yes. Did you enjoy it? No, I was scared. Because it's quite vicious, isn't it? It's violent! <laughs> He's actually got a stick and he's going yeah. around beating her. Yeah. <laughs> Punch and Judy acts like this one date back over 300 years and they've left a lasting impression on British comedy to this day. This is the origin of slapstick. That is a slapstick, and it's a slap, two slats, and it makes the noise of a slap. Listen. Yeah. It's introducing sex and violence yeah. to a four-year-old. Yeah. I'm sorry, they didn't have no, this. I'm sorry, they did not have it this was in 1955. No. There was no kissing in No, there was bashing. We were yeah. quite happy with quite simple pleasures. Do you know who I am? Are you Simon Cowell? No, I'm not Simon Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> a Punch and Judy Simon performer Cowell. is known as a punch oh, man or a professor, or in this case, Ben Hasker. Oh! Oh! oh. Would you like to oh. shake the hand? There we go. We Freezing love to oh. shake the hand. <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. But that's a wonderful pup. Right. It's strange the way they actually modelled the look on Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny idea. Yeah. I mean, it was actually done in the 17th century. I suppose yeah. he was around then. And are you, are you got a swazzle in your mouth? It is the swazzle, yep, yep. The, the famous secret. A swazzle is a tiny metal gadget that's hidden in the roof of Ben's mouth and works a bit like a whistle. Punch and Judy professors like Ben are notoriously protective of the device that gives their star his distinctive sound. Have you ever swallowed one? Uh, a few times, yes. And, and um, I always say that if it gets stuck, you'll end up talking with a squeaky voice. Really. Well, of course you will. Uh, yeah. yeah. Either that or um, yeah. you don't really want to use it after yeah. it comes out. Well, no, a punch and Judy man no. gave me one to, borrow, <laughs> to use once, and he said, it's one of my favourites. And he swallowed it several times. Yeah. <laughs> he said, at least I know what it's been. Um, the main reason for the, the use behind the swazzle uh, was because the Punch and Judy man would just have to stand there shouting all day. Yeah. Um, so because your swazzle projects so well, um, it saves your throat. For the Mr Punch voice, you have the swazzle. Yeah. But for the other characters, you don't. How, how do you manage to, uh, to shift the swazzle? It will just sit on top of the tongue in the roof of my mouth. Um, so when I need to use him for Mr Punch, it's just a case of pushing my tongue up into my mouth like this. So off you go, Mr Punch. Go, boy, go, Dr Paper, sure to say, sure to and then I can talk. And that works very well because a lot of the children, they say to me, how do you do the other voices apart from Mr. Punch's? And I say, well, it's just me putting on a stupid voice. Oh, right. well, Mr. Punch, it's been a pleasure. Do you know, this is turning into one of the great days of my life, a meaning yes. to actually come face to face with the traditional Mr. Punch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>